Welcome into a special edition of the State of Recruiting, your Horns 24-7 recruiting podcast. I'm Mike Roach, and I'm joined as always by Hudson Standish, and we are here for a special episode. It is a was a big week on the 40 Acres with a big official visit weekend, Arch Manning in town, along with a few other big name recruits. Before we get to those, and that's what we're here for tonight, is to break this down. Hudson, how's it going? Going good, Mike. Real quick, too, going to try something new this week. So, obviously, this is going to be a pretty big show for us. It's the post-Arch Manning official visit recap, adding in the his teammate Will Randall committing. So, we have a challenge for the listeners slash viewers of the show. If we can get the YouTube to 500 likes or... 500 likes plus 10 five-star reviews on the podcast, either on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. We'll do an extra show this week. So as always, liking and subscribing on the YouTube and adding those five-star reviews helps us a ton with uh, CBS and 247. But also, it'll just help boost uh, the show and get more people uh, listening to the state of recruiting. So that's the challenge for this week. We're going to be at State 7 on 7 later. We'll do an extra show if we can hit those numbers. All right. There's your challenge. It's been laid forth. Um, we're here for one reason, and it's it's to talk about the official visit uh, weekend. And it is Sunday night as we are recording this. In fact, this is so like uh, instant reaction. I took a break in the middle of writing the stampede to uh, come record this. So we're almost done with that. Still getting texts and calls in from sources and things like that. So it's not going to be a complete look, but we did want to give you everything we're hearing right away. Hudson, this is uh, your first kind of like run with me covering these big official visit weekends. We did last week. And, and last week, you know, we had the junior camp and we had – three official visitors, and it was I, – I feel like we killed it. We did a good job, all those sorts of things. Uh, not nearly as hectic as this weekend was, especially with Father's Day uh, falling on Sunday. Um, how's the experience been so far kind of uh, kind of handling these weekends? So two quick things, Mike. One, this is not just my first time with you going through the official visits. This is the first time ever doing these because, if you remember, last year I didn't get on the job until August. So the That's right. of official visits, I kind of got lucky and missed out on, you know, Kelvin Banks and a couple other t uh, recruitments that eventually ended up going Texas's way. But during the summer, we're not so fun. Um, and then two, just real quick as well. You can tell that this is a emergency. If you're on the YouTube, if you're, on, you know, just listening to the podcast, apologies for this. But uh, as you can see, we're just wearing some Sunday best stuff still. Like we're we're not in our normal, uh, you know, U.S. men's national team jersey or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, overall, the experience was really fun. It I mentioned this in my big Saturday night notes piece, but. The fun anxiety chart is just both at 10s because it is a blast tracking this down and really kind of diving into the info, hearing really fun nuggets, what's going well, what is it. But the anxiety of just like, for example, like make, trying to make sure that I had reported that like Hunter Osborne's potential commitment date was, you know, August 25th first or like trying to make sure that this had multiple la layers of sourcing on it for the fact that Quinn hung out with Arch on Saturday. Like, there's a lot of it to where it is really fun, but the anxiety is uh, is kind of um, troubling. And I realize that a lot of listeners are like, "Shut up, nerd! I'm working real jobs." Understood. But, yeah, for sure. We, but, we don't we don't want to we, we don't want to make too much out of it. But I will tell you, I do wake up on these Sundays with a quite a bit amount of like. Okay, here we go. Let's it's another week. Let's see if all these kids who said yes, I'll call you on Sunday live up to their word. And you know, what do you know? I've a lot of them tonight are like, hey, just hit me tomorrow. So that's great. And I'll have good stuff from them tomorrow, but like we've also got to get the stampede out in the morning. So it's a lot more talking to other sources and other people and uh just getting what we can. So it does uh it does complicate things. I took my dad out to lunch today for Father's Day, and it was just, I was kind of just on the phone the entire time uh, texting. So, you know, it's one of those things. They, they kind of understand. Let's get into what we have heard. Um, we'll start. I, I, do you want to start with Arch? Do you want to start with the commitment yeah, of Will Randall? Because I think that Arch does segue into the Will Randall commitment pretty nicely. 
Yeah, so let's start. Arch Manning, fourth visit to Texas. I think we've talked it to death this week. Um, I think I've talked more about Arch in the past week than maybe his parents have in his entire life. Uh, it has been kind of the one thing taking over. And Hudson, I think you remember I said last week, somewhere i i know we talked about it a lot i did a bunch of podcasts and i wrote a bunch of things so i can't remember where exactly it was but i did not expect anything like crazy sweeping changes to come out of this visit for arch manning i didn't expect there to be all of a sudden there's this big huge shift in momentum where there's okay now we're definitely getting this i thought it would just be another yeah he really liked it it was good we're going to keep on with our plan of just kind of evaluating and deciding. And I kind of think that's what happened based on the early returns of the people we've talked to. You know, I, I, I had a long conversation with his head coach today, uh, Nelson Stewart of Isidore Newman. That's up on the website uh, if everybody wants to go check that out. And, you know, he just kind of talked about his process of being, you know, that when the time is right, the time will be right. And they've never been firm on a timeline. They're not going to let anybody – or anything move them off that timeline. And so, um, you know, we'll see kind of what happens within the next week. I think that for Texas, again, it went as well as it could have. I think from what I was told, he asked kind of the hard questions. They were prepared for that. I think they had the answers he wanted. I heard, you know, he was taking a lot of notes on the trip. And I think that it's kind of to a point of, okay, we've done everything we can do. Now we're just going to kind of let the dust settle and let the chips fall where they may. And I don't think, you know, win or lose, I don't think Texas has anything to, uh, you know, really hang their heads about with this recruitment. I think recruiting a five-star quarterback, number one overall player in the country, a legacy of the most famous family of quarterbacks in football history, I think they've done everything just about perfect in this recruitment. So we'll kind of see how it plays out over the next few weeks, but I think that they're that it's almost to the point where it's out of their control at this point. Yeah, and Mike, something that you mentioned, I think Texas fans should be extremely excited that there were no super wild swings coming into this recruitment because a wild swing, in my opinion, would have meant that Georgia probably would then lead or so because the trend line was everybody behind the scenes is, is kind of seemingly sure that Texas has a little bit of an edge on Georgia and just staying with that trend line, even if Arch is truly playing it close to the vest enough to, in the end, he does pick Georgia or something wild, like Still, getting no wild swings for Texas fans right now is the best case scenario out of this visit. Another thing, too, like you kind of mentioned it on your Friday night update, I believe, for Manning, but it does, we do get the feeling that behind the scenes, they kind of are ready for this, you know, for this process to be over the Manning camp. And while they absolutely could still take it to the fall, I mean, everything that I'm hearing, and you mentioned it on Friday night, is that there are members of the, you know, core circle of trust with the Mannings that kind of want this to wrap up pretty soon. Yeah, and so I think that we'll kind of see where that goes. I I, I think coming into the weekend, there was a little bit of Georgia noise, it felt like, like just kind of minor somewhere out here. You know, like, oh, you know, maybe Georgia's getting an edge or maybe, you know, a parent wants him there or something mm. like that. But I didn't sense much of the like a change in anything with the people I talked to. It's just kind of been status quo. It's kind of the same thing. I did write this in the stampede. Um, so if you're listening to this tomorrow morning, you can read this along with the stampede. If Texas is to land Arch Manning, can we undersell the impact Michael Taff has had in this recruitment? Um, a walk-on DB from Westlake High School who is best remembered for an insane one-handed interception in the 6A state championship game against uh, Southlake has been basically like Arch's host on most of these visits. And the guy that he connected with early on and he was with all weekend, I think that's absolutely huge for Texas to have a guy like that play such a huge role in the recruitment. Mike, I think you're going to get tickled at this, but I did see a fan on Twitter who, you know, like uh, a lot of these fans, like they – are kind not as in tune to anything outside of the Texas sphere. So it was like, why is this random 
walk on hosting Arch Manning. This doesn't make sense. And, uh, you know, this is just some random kid. And the Texas high school football nerd in me just wanted to scream at them, no. You, you will not disrespect former All-State oh. defensive back Michael Taft like that. The state championship game MVP and legit probably could have gone to a G5 school if you wanted to. And I think I even reported it in the spring when I was getting a lot of scrimmage notes. Like, he was great. He's a great football player. Is it hilarious that he is a true key cog in both the Arch Manning and Will Randall recruitments? And spoiler alert, guys, Will like – Taft got him one in the bag with uh, Will Randall, and now it's just about completing the uh, double. But I would just the quick Texas high school football nerd was like, "Hey, let's put some respect on uh, Mookie's name." I believe that's what they call him out at Westlake. But yeah, yeah. go back and watch that six A state title game and, and he, put some respect on him. Absolutely, and and I realize that it is a very small kind of stupid point to make, but that is one thing that I was just like, "Come on, let's." And by the way, like you said, a guy that might be called upon to log some significant snaps this year. Yeah, and, but but also too uh, another recruiting thing. Like I heard that he was crushing it on the uh, Bosick uh, official visit too, along with Connor Robertson and Ethan Burke, some other Westlake guys at Texas. So uh, maybe he's I, just a great time. Yeah, exactly. So and also too, Mike, I think you can mention this as well. But when we talked on our preview, I want to say we mentioned him as the kind of core host of mm -hmm. Arch Manning. But, and I'll segue to this, there was a new person that spent some time with Arch in Texas quarterback Quinn Ewers, a fellow number one overall um, overall ranked guy. I got that nugget on Saturday. I was pretty hyped. I called you immediately. What was your reaction for the fans kind of listening at home when I told you that nugget that I put on? I mean, I think when we talked last week and we talked about keys, I that's one I mentioned was like I wanted to see him around the core of the team. And I don't know, I haven't heard how much, if any, time he spent with Bijan or Xavier Worthy or guys like that. But like my initial thought was okay, if he spends some time with Quinn or one of those key like faces of the team, I think that that's a good sign for Texas and that's a good, it's a good tool for Texas. And I think to your point, when you reported it, having a guy who um, was in that position, number one overall, five-star quarterback, um, all those sorts of things who can say, hey, like, I get what you're going through. Um, and this is why, you know, maybe he could say, hey, I didn't make the decision I wanted to first time around, and this is why I chose Texas. You know, I think those things are, are big for him. You, do you got something? Is, uh, is, you got a, is Cherry off on the side? Doing some shenanigans or something? I see no, you laughing. I just, thought, I just thought of something really funny. Do you remember the um? Do you, it was just we were speaking about the whole like get him out of his normal crew thing? Do you remember right. the old? Uh, <laughs> I think it was a, a pretty good troll when Jimbo Fisher got the Texas A and M job with the like, hey Prony, has uh, Jimbo seen Revely yet? Like this is. Do you remember that meme? I do, yeah. I, I mean, I think it was a real post, right? Would you say? I think it was a real message board post, right? Was or was it was, was it a troll? Regardless, it's hysterical. I thought about just subbing Arch for Jimbo and Bebo for Reveille. Like, <laughs> has Arch gotten to connect with Bebo? That'd be really big for the rest of the retreat. So maybe I'll yeah. maybe not once we get off the pod. But um, that was just getting me kind of tickled, just thinking about Arch expanding his crew and getting with uh, with Quinn. <laughs> With with uh, Quinn and Bevo and Bevo, yeah. Um, so yeah, not like not a ton. I, I think too, it doesn't sound like they changed up the visits a ton. It was kind of their standard deal, which like I don't think they needed to. I think I think that things have been going well. And if you panic and at the last minute you're like, hey, we're gonna do all this crazy stuff, that's probably a bad sign to somebody like Arch. I think he just you know he wants to come talk ball. He wants to hang out with the boys and he wants to you know just have a good time in austin and i think if you look at at that checklist those boxes seem to be checked yeah absolutely i it's almost i don't know if there's a saying for it but it's almost like there's no reason to really uh win the leg kick and try to go for a homer when you've been hitting doubles throughout the visit process like and also right. i think too, Mike, there is a lot of inconsistency for Texas on the field. So keeping everything in the actual visit process 
as consistent as you can definitely kind of underscores the overall program vision. Um, something too that it's just, I think we need to hit on on Arch truly before we move on to his teammate, Will Randall. The early returns on impact if he did commit to Texas are just pretty wild. Like there are just so many nuggets that we hear of this recruit might be trending this way, but if he, if Arch does actually hop into the boat, this is going to change. Like the domino effect or sliding doors of him making that call, especially the sooner opposed to the later. I mean, the impact is just crazy. And it almost for a while became a cliche throughout the spring. And some fans would get a little bit of annoyed about it. Of Okay. Well, we'll actually see when we see, but man, I mean, hearing firsthand from a lot of kids and other sources, it's just kind of wild. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's get into the, his friend and teammate, Will Randall, who I think we there's a chance. I think I've written his friend and teammate, Will Randall, so many times there's a chance it could get turned into a board meme. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to try to stay away from that exact phrasing. But he, Texas landed a commitment from Isidore Newman tied in Will Randall, who plays on the same team with Arch Manning. There's, that's the best way to say it. Um Here's what I found extremely interesting, and I guess not extremely, I guess, you know, it's uh, take it however you want it, but talking to Nelson Stewart, I asked him, what do you think this does for the Arch recruitment? And his word was, and this has kind of been Arch's take and Will's take, what I've talked to them about in the past is that, you know, we are best friends, we've played together for the last seven years, but we are going to ultimately make our own decisions. Here's where... I thought it was interesting. Will or uh, Nelson recounted for me that when Texas offered Will, that they told him this has nothing to do with Arch. You came in, you camped with us. We liked what you brought to the table. You earned this offer on your own. You are a take independent of whether or not Arch Manning commits here. And they treated it very much like its own recruitment from the beginning. It wasn't a throw in, you know, buy one, get one deal. Uh, for them it was a you know you are the guy for us whether we get arch or not and so i think it's a smart way obviously to attack that recruitment if that's the guy they want um on the field i think that uh at that level he's kind of their biggest weapon uh for for newman um plays kind of off the ball can play on the ball they've played him at running back before he's played plays defensive end uh in fact when i was out there in the spring he was practicing a defensive end uh, and we'll play both sides this this year. It's just uh, he alternates days when he practices on offense and defense. So uh, a versatile guy, I think a guy that when you look at what they've already got in Spencer Shannon is their big classic inline tight end, and you look at Jatavian Sanders and Jill Billingsley, who are guys you could split out wide and do some things with. Will Randall maybe fits as this, you know, he's an H-back for us, so kind of. The same, maybe a similar type of role that Cade Brewer played, or that uh, you know that that like Andrew Beck was able to play on on those teams a couple of years ago. Yeah, and to your first point, Mike, I think that something the Texas staff should really be applauded uh, for when we eventually are kind of doing our recap, bringing in Will Randall uh, without Arch, I believe, for the spring game was mm-hmm. just a really smart thing to do because it is kind of one thing to say, oh, yeah, no, we're definitely going to recruit you without Arch. But, you know, having some self-awareness, uh, I'm sure Will kind of understands um, that, like, it does play a factor. So bringing in him and affirming that with, hey, you're here without Arch, we're treating you exactly the same, we're showing you the same level of love – I'm sure that definitely played a big factor in his, his recruitment, but you know, kind of like we put in our crystal balls this uh, weekend because we'd been hearing forever that this was going to happen. But something that kind of played a factor too, I think, is that other than Texas, his other options were, you know, I think we've talked about this before, you know, uh, Virginia, Tulane, and maybe I think SMU as well. So like te- LSU, LSU was recruiting him hard. Uh, from what I was told, and so was, uh, yeah. Take it, I take it for what's worth. Nelson told me that he felt Alabama was recruiting him aggressively as well. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, 
Well, uh, we can go on to the next segment. <laughs> what do you? Uh, where do you like him fit wise? He'll play H, like you said. He is versatile. Like they can move him around. Um, I don't know. One thing I will say with Julio Billingsley, you can play him as like a true H to where you can put him offset in the backfield. You can kind of move him around, put him in motion. Mm-hmm. But more than anything, you can put Julio Billingsley out there in trips as the third receiver, and he can run a variety of routes and not just be kind of known as, okay, they've got him out there in trips. They're going to run a screen and he's going to block or they're going to run something short with him in the flat. Jaleel Billingsley can run the entire route tree. I'm not sure if I see that with Will right now, but considering what he can potentially develop into, I mean, you never know. I do think that he'll just be like a really solid. I can see them even using him as a de facto fullback if they really need right. to. And the big positive with this, if you're just looking at it from a straight recruiting and kind of scheme fit point they grabbed spencer shannon from uh modern day last week who i'm extremely high on uh at the y inline position so you don't have to worry about potentially fitting will randall into a spot that he's not super comfortable in you can have spencer shannon as that long-term y prospect at six foot seven two forty and then will randall can develop at his own pace in the h spot which i'd say most tight ends kind of uh more project to because it's how you'd use the tight end in high school if they're really good. Whereas the why is right. like that's, that's a big boy job. Yeah. No, I think I think both are are great points. So adding him to Jeff Banks from from what we could tell, I think unless a guy like Deuce Robinson wanted him, which obviously they'd be like, okay, we're just taking three tight ends then. Yeah. But uh seems like Jeff Banks may be done at his position for the year. Um within a two week span filling up with two guys. So uh, yeah, big, big doings there. Let's move on to the rest of the visit weekend. Um, a few big names were in and we're, we're gathering info still as we speak. I think probably the name other people want to know about outside of Arch Manning, uh, is four star Dallas South Oak Cliff corner Malik Muhammad. Uh, talk to Manny tonight, uh, for a little bit. He's one of the kids that was like, Hey, uh, catch me tomorrow. Um, but did give me a, a little bit of a quote, just saying it was a great overall visit, felt like home. It was fantastic hospitality, um, and, and they, they had a great time bonding with the recruits and the staff. I think Texas has done tremendous work um, in that recruitment in the last month or two. I think I was – I want to say Manny made a visit to Texas about the same time I was in Baton Rouge for the state track meet in Louisiana because I distinctly remember riding back on the airport shuttle at uh, New Orleans airport, talking to him on the phone as he was leaving his visit. So that would have been May 9th uh, when I had gone out to see Arch originally. And in that amount of time, I think they've been able to kind of claw back and get into that top group along with Alabama and A&M and maybe even be pushing past at some point. Um, Hudson, you have heard some really favorable things over the weekend as well. Yeah, kind of similar, Mike. I have been a little bit fading the talk of Manny to Texas for a little bit. And maybe in two months or so, I'll look back at this and be like, oh, why didn't you stay true to your gut? But we just are hearing way too many positive things for it to be discounted. I did hear that he might take a uh, trip this upcoming week to Alabama. So we'll see kind of if the post-visit high wears off. But... I mean, overall, it seems like Texas has really made a move and crushed it with him. And when you think about, you know, the potential defensive back class, which we kind of were a little bit, I wouldn't say worried, but looking at of, okay, how are these pieces going to fit with a couple targets off the board early? Could this be one of the more, one of the weaker position groups? But if you can get a guy like Malik Muhammad, who's a true blue chip level player, we think Texas is in a good spot with Jordan Matthews. Those are two of the best corners in the nation. And then you can piece together your other takes to complement Jamel Johnson and end up with a really good haul. So overall, I do think that Texas really put a strong foot forward with Muhammad. And um, I don't know, Mike, I, I think that something that could be a little bit of a factor is the fact that Austin – uh, is a city that Manny really likes, and especially when you compare it to Tuscaloosa and College Station. Towns I actually like, but just when you look at the overall profile of the three cities, I mean, it does seem like that could be a little bit of an edge for Texas just in that specific part. Here's something else I think could matter. 
I'm rolling through my brain and cannot remember the last South of Cliff Golden pair to go to Texas. Um, little trailblazer theory, I guess. Yeah, is and Manny does like that idea of kind of blazing his own trail. I'm trying to think. There certainly have been some that have been committed, uh, but did not sign. Um, I think for him, that's a, that's an angle, especially look. His so his teammate Javon Thomas is committed to Texas AM. I think he loves Javon. I think he loves playing with Javon. But I also think I've heard from some people may Manny may want to go be the show in college at his own place and not necessarily with others. So I, I think that could be you know could come into play as well. We'll we'll just kind of have to see. I'm I'm really interested to see when I catch up with him tomorrow what he tells me um and what you know what I hear from sources out at sock but i i do think you and i just the way this recruitment's gone and i i i'll just humbly say i don't think there's a person with a better read on sock kids than me uh in general um i just i spend way too much time around the program and the people around it but i think you and i have been slow to believe on this one just knowing the ins and outs of the recruitment leading up to it um i think i'm actually starting to buy a little bit I'm not all the way in, but I'm sorry to buy in a little bit on Texas chances. Yeah, I think a healthy amount of buying. It's just with, with like when I was just remembering comments that Manny made from, you know, early in the process, it's just hard to buy Texas as a real threat. But, you know, actions speak louder than words. And every action from this weekend makes you think that he is a legit chance to when it comes time to put pen to paper, end up at Texas, which probably would end up being their highest ranked defensive back. I, I don't have his ranking off the top of my head, but I want I mean, to say he's Yeah, and there's and look, there's still very much in it for JV and Taviano uh, Absolutely. as well. Yeah. So he, he could definitely be in it as well. Um, let's talk Hunter Osborne. Yeah, uh, Hunter Osborne out of Hewitt Trustville High School in Alabama, suburb of Birmingham, I believe. One of the guys that I've really – Kind of, kind of had my eye on early, and unfortunately for me, for a while, Texas just would not offer until this last May. Basically, less than a month ago, Bo Davis swung by Hewitt Trustville and was like, "Hey, I realize I'm late to the party, but we're here to make some noise. Give us a chance." And Hunter told me right away that that was an offer that he had kind of always wanted, and that Texas, even though he was going to release a top five the following week. Texas had a chance to make it, but two things would have to happen. One, Steve Sarkeesian would need to prove to him that he's a priority for Texas. And two, in those conversations, it would need to be pretty clear that like, okay, a little bit of owning up on not offering you, we think you're this low. And that's exactly what happened though. Sark immediately got on the phone with them. You know this, Mike, but maybe fans don't. Sark has kind of taken a little bit of a more uh, – dig deeper, not wider approach with recruitments this cycle mm -hmm. to where maybe he was a little overextended last cycle. And this year it's more about building those relationships, like with guys like Braylon Shelby or now Hunt, like the true defensive prospects that are priorities for Texas. He's really going on all in on. And that's what happened with Osborne. I was told the visit went extremely well. I think that rekindling with Justice Finkley and just having Fink kind of let him know like hey i've i've been at texas for basically i think less than uh you know six, six months, months basically yeah. yeah exactly half a year and it's one of the better decisions i've made here's how i think that you can have an immediate impact here you would be a culture fit because texas reminds me of our high school this way and getting to chop it up with byron murphy too who as i was told made a pretty big impression on the visit which uh you know, Finkley and Murphy, it should have clicked with me that those two would be friends just because of their attitudes. But, I mean, give those, those guys are, a buddy. Those are down-to-business guys. Like, let's yeah, get exactly. down to business. Like, that just makes so much sense to me. I wish I would have pieced it together early. But overall, the reports are really good for Texas. What I would say, though, to kind of caution a little bit, I do think that Clemson and Tennessee – just because of the fact that they've been recruiting Osborne for such a longer amount of time do probably hold an edge. And that's heading into Osborne's Tennessee official visit next week. 
a possible commitment date is August 25th. I mentioned that earlier uh, in the show. And as of right now, I kind of do think that it's headed towards uh, <laughs> one, a school that uh, has orange as a primary color for the uh, school. But I don't know. <laughs> I, I get a little bit of a Clemson vibe just because of how much they've really kind of sold him on the family pitch. And I know that he's boys with uh, Christopher Vizina, their quarterback commit as well. So I don't know. I, I almost want, if the August 25th visit does hold Mike, I almost would maybe want Texas to try and get him on campus one more time. I think you got to, especially with an out of state guy like that. You know, I kind of likened it to the Finkley. I, I think profile-wise, it, it doesn't profile all that differently than Finkley's recruitment. The difference was they had a lot more time invested in the Finkley recruitment. They had hosted yeah. him for an unofficial and things of that nature. So, yeah, I think I think you're, you're exactly right um, as far as that. Uh, let's move on to uh, Jaquez Petaway, the four-star receiver out of Langham Creek in Houston. Hudson, I'll be a little honest. It's not that we heard anything went poorly. In fact, we heard everything went well. But I was expecting a little more buzz out of this recruitment following the weekend than we got. I was too, to be completely honest. And we kind of mentioned it in my latest update on the board, the Sunday night one. It's not that Texas did anything wrong. I've actually heard a couple really positive things about the potential pitch for Petaway. Um, I still think it's kind of 50-50-ish, and depending on your sources, you're either leaning Oklahoma as the favorite or leaning Texas as the favorite. But with Arch on campus and with Brennan Marion's ability to close recruitments that he's already shown with Ryan Niblett, I was expecting an overwhelming amount of buzz for Petaway, and we didn't get there. Now, I think what part of that is, Mike, and I'm not sure how you feel on this, Petaway is such a reserved kid, and he's pretty mm -hmm that a lot of times on these visits, uh, when you're talking to sources, for example, it's very clear that uh, Manny Muhammad liked his Texas visit because Manny's going to let you know how he's feeling. Like he's he's not going to be as reserved with his emotions, whereas with Petaway, you kind of do have to dig a little bit deeper. And I was told that he kind of kept to himself for the, uh, and I think I reported that Saturday night, for the first part of the visit. But then when it came time to top golf and, you know, the boys were goofing and just hanging out. Uh, it, 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 he really opened up. I was told that there was some conversations about the potential quarterback room at Texas compared to OU that kind of played favorite, favorably in Texas's manner. But at the end of the day, I'm with you that I kind of was expecting to hear more. And if we start to hear buzz in a week or two that – Maybe Oklahoma's the favorite. It wouldn't shock me based on what we've gotten right now. Now, two or days, two days from now, we could hear, oh, they crushed the visit. And that would track too, just based on kind of how it takes time to filter or uh, get info from Petaway just because of, you know, his kind of quiet nature. Yeah. It's kind of the same way when he visited in the spring. It was like, well, we don't really know how it was. And then the info coming out afterwards was really strong. So you're right. It could definitely be that. It is still very early. Remember, this is a reactionary pod from what we're getting on Sunday night. What we could have by Tuesday night is a lot different. So uh, yeah. stay tuned to the website for that. Um, the only other guys I think I'll mention is uh, uh, Mikhail Harrison Pilot from Temple, uh, two-way athlete. I think I uh, first, like, let's just – the, the couple guys from out of state, Sadir Mitchell and uh, Raul Aguirre, we A, haven't got a ton on them yet, although I mentioned this in the Stampede, and I do think it's an interesting note, obviously. Maybe the most oh. interesting note in the yeah, Stampede is, is that Raul Aguirre was not set to come to Texas. His, his decision was a bit of a surprise, and it was, from what I understand, because Arch Manning had met him on the Alabama visit and kind of convinced him to take the Texas visit. So um, that is interesting. I just don't see Texas having enough there, um, or, or with Sadir Mitchell. Um, and I'm, For sure. Am I, for, am I forgetting anyone else that was on the trip? Oh, Mikel Gardner, again, t another kid I talked to, just feel like that's probably going to go Michigan or Oregon or something else. But, Mike, to circle back to your uh, Raul Aguirre quote, like that is the eyebrow raiser. And that I think, too, if you want proof of concept that the arch momentum thing isn't BS, 
that right there is it. That a kid that was not on the Texas radar whatsoever, like at all, just met Arch and was convinced to take an OV to Texas just by that pull in its own. And that's a linebacker. That's not a receiver. That's not an offensive lineman. It's somebody that's, you know, tangibly could be connected to the quarterback. That's just a linebacker that he met who was like, oh, this guy looks good. You should go to Texas this next week. Like that's such a really intriguing note. And um, I think it's proof of concept of what the potential future could be if he did hop in. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Um, so we're not going to gloss, or we're going to gloss over those guys. We'll just we'll hit on pilot and get out of here. Um, coming into the week, we told you, you know, he's kind of wanted, indicated he wants to play wide receiver at the next level. Britton Marion has gotten involved in that recruitment. Texas has kind of gone all in on, yeah, you could be a wide receiver, and I think that they like. You know, athletically, the way he type kind of profiles, he can run. He's got some size. He's got ball skills. I personally like him a lot more at safety, but he is a take. I mean, he is a legitimate player at wide receiver as well. Yeah, he, he's really good at both. I do think that the floor or and ceiling are both a lot higher at safety, but it's one of those things where you just get good players on campus and then you figure it out. Mike? What I was kind of posing to you is that from a scheme fit with Jaden Greathouse trending away from Texas, likely ending up at Notre Dame, you can kind of uh, uh, plug and play Mikel Harrison Pilot in that same role. I don't think is effectively, to be completely honest, but the fit is kind of there as similar players. So I think that makes sense. Another thing I think that we should absolutely mention on MHP is the fact that we said it before the visit and he kind of proved it on the visit. Like he is somebody that could absolutely get wrapped up in our, our momentum. Like that is a factor for him big time. Do I think it's going to be the only factor? And, you know, he put, he put an Instagram comment uh, on a live that was like, Oh, if Arch Manning commits to Texas, I'm going to commit to Texas too. It's never that easy. Like, no, you know, do you if you remember Evan Stewart? Uh, yeah, I was just thinking in my head, Evan Stewart's if Texas goes to the SEC, exactly in 2023. For, yeah. for those who don't remember, I can't even remember what site put it out, but there was just a reactionary quote from Evan Stewart that was like, Look, if Texas is going to the SEC, then that's absolutely I will commit right now. It, it's never that easy, but yeah, it is I texted him and I said, Hey, Evan, there actually are some discussions that they're going to be able to get out of the contract and in, in 2023. So be careful what you say to people. And he was like, Oh, yeah, I was just messing around. <laughs> like, exactly. So that's also just a, a lesson of, you know, taking kids sometime at their word. Like the, it depends on the kid. Like a kid like Justice Finkley is never going to put anything out that he's not, you know. Yeah. I think with Harrison Pilot, though, there are a lot of things in their favor. They're right up the road from Temple. Um, You know, they if he wants to play receiver, they have an offensive scheme that's favorable to him. If you look at kind of the schools we see standing out for Harrison Pilot, it's Oklahoma with Jeff Levy. It's TCU with Sonny Dykes. It's Texas with Steve Sarkeesian. It's offensive minded schools that throw the ball around and, and can produce offense. And so um, I think those things are in their favor. I think that obviously the need at receiver is there. And I think the fact that they've embraced it and have said, yeah, like it, it almost feels like they're recruiting him harder as a receiver than they ever were as a safety. I think as a safety, they just kind of saw him as one of the guys on their board. Whereas now I think they may see the vision better than I do, at least on him, his fit as a receiver. Mike, I want to pose something to you real quick, a question that we got on the board. I'm not sure if it is this simple, but with Oklahoma and Texas seeming like the unofficial top twos for Jaquez Petaway and Mikhail Harrison Pilot, would you be content with just a split of the two, no matter how it went? Probably. I mean, I, I obviously how, would... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you'd obviously want the guy that runs 10-5. But, sure. um, but yeah, I, I think I'd be content with that. I, we should also mention, by the way, Houston should not be ignored in the race for pilot. It's a school that has proven that they can go get some guys, and his dad went to school there. So um, there there are some ties to U of H as well. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, I think I'd be good with that. I, I mean, I think right now they need athletic bodies in the receiver room. And 
Mikel Harrison Pilot might not be Ryan Niblett or Quest Petaway when it comes to just straight on speed, but there's no doubt he's an athletic body. I mean, we're talking about a kid who has been a star uh, at Temple since he was a freshman both ways. He's also a really, really strong baseball player um, and uh, runs track too, I believe. So, yeah, and you I know, think he has a sub 11, like, or right at an 11 flat. Yeah, I mean, he's not slow at all by any means. I just, you know, I. I, I think, yeah, I think you'd have to be happy with walking away with the split there. Yeah, and, and to clarify as well, Jaquez Petaway is my favorite receiver in the state. I think that he is somebody that Texas absolutely should just do everything they can to get. My point being that if it came down to splitting, you know, either Petaway ending up at Texas or MHP at Oklahoma or vice versa. I think mo- both schools would be like, okay, let's just not go 0 for 2 on it, especially considering, yeah. let's just say with Texas, the receiver board with getting Niblet in early and then a couple of the other big-time targets that we haven't even talked about, like it could end up being quite the haul for UT. Yeah, absolutely. And I think to get back to the weekend, sounds like everything went well. I think going all in on that effort – has put them in position now to where they are in the top group. And now it sounds like he wants to carry things out on the stretch. And I think that'll matter as well. You know, how does this class fill up with or without him? And, um, you know, if he wants to carry things to signing day or deep into the fall, he'll probably have to make some decisions on if he wants to stick to that timeline. For sure. Mike, do you think that, do you think that wraps it up, kind of? I think think that wraps it up. I think I need to get back to the stampede, so I'm not up till 1 a.m. writing it. And, yes, sir, go ahead. One more thing, just a friendly reminder to the listeners for your challenge. 500 YouTube likes. Let's get some five-star reviews on the podcast if you want another pod this week. Smash that subscribe button. Hey, and you know what? We're going to be in College Station at State 7 on 7 with some other people. We might be able to get some fun guests on the pod this week if we do it. Yeah, fun little collab. So smash that subscribe button and let's see what we can do. All right. Um, Hudson, you good on this? Anything else? Yeah, I think so. This was fun. I mean, this is exactly what I think if I was you know, still a fan I'd want from kind of the initial post react. I think that we should still be hearing things. I mean, even tonight, I'm going to get on a call right after this. You're going to keep doing a stampede and into mm-hmm. tomorrow. But, Mike, I guess one more thing. It doesn't sleep. Not only are we going to be at State 7-on-7 seven seven getting a ton of info, but arguably a just as big recruiting weekend is coming up for Texas. So, again, make sure to subscribe to just the Horns 24-7 website because, okay, we get done with Arch and there's a – you know, probably 20 plus person giant official visit weekend coming up with guys like Anthony Hill. And I mean, Jaden chat so many true Daring stars. Gallet. Daring, yeah. So many true stars that are going to be on the campus. And if you know anything about our website, they'll tell you that if Mike Roach goes on vacation, it is sure to yield commitments. Well, folks, I leave for vacation a week from today as you're hearing this on Monday. So uh next week it could be great for texas who knows so um all right for uh thank you to taylor estes for jumping on with us late and producing this uh to hudson standish i'm mike roach we'll see you guys next week